Hello everybody. I hope all of you are having a good day today. You know, here lately I've uh, gotten quite a few new subscribers and, and I love you guys. I love all of you. <laughs> uh, but with new subscribers come really amazing and great people and also come religious spirits. And uh, religious spirits always give me the willies. Uh, my last channel before it got hacked had almost 3,000 subscribers and and it's about 75 awesome people and about 25 percent religious spirits and um you know it uh i always used to um in the very beginning first couple of years i played bible ping pong you know it's just back and forth back and forth and and god finally showed me that's just fruitless you know it accomplishes nothing you know you there people's eyes are closed you can't they're just not going to see it Okay, and God said, just go back to love. That's what changed you, you know, with me personally. I, that's, uh, it was God's love that changed me and made me a new person. It was when I experienced his love, I heard his voice, that I received peace, this God-given faith. And um, so that, that's when my life was changed. But, but I, I, after I, I stopped fighting with people, with Bible verses and things, um, I... Uh, I started using their words against them. If someone would, would hit me up with something, I would use it to fuel me to make videos. Because it's easier for me to speak than it is to type. Because all I got is an iPhone anyway, and I'm in the middle of the jungle. I don't have a computer. So it's easier for me to speak and just let the spirit flow. And I always go off of my testimony, what I have experienced personally and how it changed me and made me a new person. It was not by my works. I didn't do anything. So anyway, the other day I, I get a message from one and his comment was, how can you understand the Bible if you don't keep God's holy Sabbath? You know, <laughs> how, how can you understand the Bible understand the Bible if you don't keep the Sabbath. And then he uh, posted the Bible verse, I think John 14, 15 or something like that about, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. But Jesus didn't say, if you love me, you will keep the Mosaic law, all right? And there's a big difference in the wording there and the translators of the Bible didn't distinguish between those all right the translators of the bible translated confusion remember god is not the author of confusion all right whenever somebody hits me up with something from the mosaic law sabbaths eating pork shrimp whatever Whatever it is, if it's anything connected to the Mosaic Law, I always go back to Jeremiah 8, 8. And that's where it's written. Jeremiah tells him, he said, How can you say you're wise that you have the law of the Lord when actually the lying pen of the scribes have handled it falsely? Meaning that there is lies lies in the Torah. It's written in the Gospels that, that, um, that Jesus opened up the disciples' minds, their inner man, so they could understand the scriptures. And Christians today, I, I don't know what it is, they will read that and automatically assume the Bible, the Gospels, New Testament letters, Book of Revelations, the Old Testament. When Jesus spoke those words, there was no Gospels written. There was no New Testament letters. There was no New Testament. When he spoke those words, there was not a testator. In order for there to be a testator, someone has to die, and he hadn't died yet. The scriptures he was talking about was the Torah, the prophets, and the Psalms. Those were God-breathed, given to Moses on the mountain directly. Okay? They're the ones that were given for rebuking, correcting, and stuff like that. Jesus opened their minds so they could understand it, so they could see 
that Christ was everywhere in the Torah, but they tried to bury him in lies. They tried to bury him with all these works and all these holidays and festivals and things like that. When the truth to the whole matter, Jesus, they asked Jesus, they said, what, what is the, the most important law? And he said, love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And the second is just as good, love your neighbor as yourself. Paul wrote that, that the law in those two commands, the whole law is kept. All right, so you go back to Leviticus and Deuteronomy where God said it, it, it's written in there. Love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Love your neighbor as yourself. But those lying pens, the scribes, got a hold of it and created a religion out of it. 613 laws. Even God told them through, through his, his um, prophets, he says, I hate your new moons and your Sabbaths. Your new moons, your Sabbaths, your festivals, your feast. He didn't say mine. He said yours. Stuff you did. Jesus didn't die on the cross to give us a Bible. He never promised us a Bible. What he promised was the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God will teach you everything, even the deep things. The anointing you have received, you don't need any man to teach you. All that stuff's written. It's all there. Christ died on the cross to separate men from the letter. They were attached to the letter at the hip. They couldn't go nowhere without it. Jesus even told them, he said, you diligently search those scriptures because in them you think that you have eternal life. He said, but you have to, he said, they just talk about me, but you buried me in there. He said, you have to come to me to have life. And what is life? What is eternal life? It's written, this is eternal life to know the one true God, and Christ Jesus, the one whom he sent. To know, that's a personal knowing. That means a experiencing him, dying to yourself and Christ rising up within you. That's when you become one, you've known him. Like Mary said, I haven't known a man. All right, it's when you become one. It's a marriage, it's a wedding. And whenever you, you get married, you know, before they kiss the bride, he lifts the veil. You have to lift the veil and then you kiss the bride. And most of the time back then, they would lift the veil and they would see their husband for the first time. And that's what the word revelation in Greek, apocalypse, means. Is uncovering something that's been hidden to lift the veil. Once, once you, God is, is, has raised up within you, that's when you experience His eternal life now. It's not for... You know, if you live a long life and you die, or if you crash in an accident tomorrow and you die, it's not for some future thing that happens after you take your last breath here in this world. It's what happens right now. It's experiencing God's eternal life now. You know, I, I like to, to use Bible verses and things just to show people because I can show people that hidden in the Greek and the Hebrew is the truth about ascension, about God opening up his eye within you, the sleeper awakening, the real Christ, the real anointing. They've hidden that in the New Testament writings and gospels, just like the scribes hid Jesus in the Torah, the prophets, and the Psalms. They created a religion out of the Torah, the prophets, and a song. And mankind today has done the same thing and created a religion out of the Gospels, the letters, and the book of Revelations. All right? There's nothing new under the sun. They did it once before to the God-breathed scriptures. They used to say they're not going to do it here. Because that's what the elites of the world do, is they control people through religion. And then you add a few more religions in the world to cause more divisions. All right, when the truth is within us. See, everybody puts faith in what's written whenever it's supposed to be written within us. Remember Paul said, you know, you show that you're a letter written not with ink or carved in stone, 
but in your hearts. Okay, remember the letter kills, the, the spirit gives life, and that's that life that we were talking about earlier. This is eternal life. The spirit gives that. The letter kills. If you're trying to live your life in the letter, oh, I gotta, okay, I gotta keep the Sabbath, I gotta do this, I can't touch that. All right, that, that brings you death. But God is not the author of confusion. He is the author and finisher of your faith. Once you receive that, that peace, this, that divine faith, it is by grace you have been saved through faith. Divine faith, not human faith. And that comes from experiencing God, your beloved. Those who have experienced God's love, hearing His voice and experiencing His love. All right? Each time you go out in faith, because now I'm here on top of a mountain in the middle of the jungle in Southeast Asia, 10,000 miles away from my mama in Texas. Okay, but I came here because of faith. He told me to come. I had faith. I came here. And look at us now. I'm a nobody from Northeast Texas, and we've almost fed 100,000 children. We provided 100,000 meals, 60,000 articles of clothing, countless medications and medical procedures. I'm not a learning man. I didn't go to college to learn how to be a missionary. I didn't go to cemetery, seminary school. I didn't do any of that. I can never boast and say I did anything. It's all God and me having faith and following that faith. My faith is in the Spirit. It is not in anything that's written down. Believe it or not, I have not opened up a Bible in over seven years. And you wait, I'll see people in the comment section now going, that's your problem. That's the problem right there. That's why you all messed up and all this new age stuff. <laughs> you know, I hadn't opened the Bible in over seven years. But I'll see people quote Bible verses and stuff. And I'll just Google it. Look, I say, you know what? I, I've gotten to where now to where I've studied the Greek and Hebrew so much that whenever I see a Bible verse, I can almost know which word was used in the Greek because there's like for the word faith and belief it's the same word pistis or pistu there's human faith and belief and there's there's God-given human faith and belief there's like four different words for death different deaths and only one of them mean a physical death but I've gotten to the point to where I, I almost every time I already know which one it's going to be Greek or Hebrew my faith doesn't come in what is written my faith is comes in what he wrote on me already all right in revelations it, it's written he said outside are the dogs those who practice the magic arts sexually immoral those are the people the sexually immoral are the ones that sleep with the prostitute okay that's what it's talking about and the murderers you were a murderer from the beginning Cain Satan you know they murdered with the letter the letter kills all right, and those at the end it says, and those who practice falsehood. Those who are trying to live by a letter that is covered in lies. Those are the ones outside. They're not seeing the kingdom of God. You must be born again if you're going to see the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is all around you. It's within you. If you've been born again. But if you're trying to live by the letter and keep Moses' law, the law of Moses, even though you weren't born under the law, even though you weren't a practicing Jew, you trying to put yourself under the law. Jesus died on the cross to release us from the letter to live in the Spirit. I love you all. God bless.